Hey everybody, welcome back to my Eurovision React Review channel. So basically what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be doing a video because yesterday Wee Wee Blogs announced their shortlist for their Vision Music Awards. So basically if you are a subscriber to my channel you know that I'm currently traveling so I'm taking a break from that series. If this is the first video of mine that you're watching, uh, do check out my channel. So I'm currently traveling around Europe and every country that I go to I recap, review and rank the songs from that country. So I'm currently in my fifth country. So, so far on my channel, what have I done? Poland, Hungary and Croatia. So the fourth one will be up in the next couple of days. This is the view currently from my terrace. Terrace, yeah. So um, I've only got kind of seven or eight days left of traveling. So I'm dedicating this morning to the Vision Music Awards. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the categories and I am going to myself say which one or which act or which country I think should win each category. So let's do this. Right, most likely to succeed commercially. It does say in the article actually, yeah, artists like ABBA, Celine Dion, Gina G. I mean, she had some hits, I guess. Um, but certainly Maniskin last year is riding the wave of success from the exposure that Eurovision gave them. Actually, Armenia. That would be interesting had this had been done straight after Eurovision. I don't think Rosalyn would be there, but obviously. One, two, where are you? Where are you? <laughs> Love that song. Um, Italy. Um, Mahmoud and Blanco are, are really successful already, particularly in Italy. And actually, Mahmoud is big outside of Italy as well, isn't he? I saw he was at a concert in Albania, I think. He's already commercially successful. Chanel, Spain, Cornelia, Sweden, United Kingdom, Sam Ryder, and Ukraine. If I was going to whittle this down to three, there's no denying all of these don't have talent. There's no denying that all of these have talent. It's quite rare for a Swedish act to then become commercial outside of Sweden from Eurovision, other than ABBA, obviously. I'm going to go with Armenia because you can't just ignore that due to Rosalind riding high at the moment. And the fact that she wrote that song as well, or was a key part, key, no, she wrote that song. So she's going to follow that up with similar sounding songs, which evidently people are loving. Chanel, obviously, I think everyone is like on the edge of their seats to see what she does next, what road she will take. And I guess Sam Ryder from the UK, right? So out of those three, I think there's probably, if I'm going to go with hype, I'd probably say Chanel. And that's probably added to the fact that obviously Spanish Eurovision fans are probably on the edge of their seats and they are vocal and they're very supportive. So I think Chanel. And I think also, you know, the Latin American market is huge. You know, if you're able to conquer Spain, then it's not so difficult then to go to South America. Right, or Central and South America. So let's say Chanel for that one. Okay, let's go down. Best dressed, whether on stage or the turquoise carpet. Right, I've got to remember what people were wearing at the turquoise carpet now. Norway, okay. Moldova, I mean, I said that the, uh, the two traditional musicians in that act, I loved what they were wearing. Australia, Sheldon, Chanel, Spain, I guess that's probably for the red carpet look, right? Sweden, the red carpet, turquoise, Sweden, Montenegro, again, I don't remember their outfits necessarily standing out on stage, that must be for the turquoise carpet. I'm going to have just to go with the stage, because I, I know Chanel looked phenomenal on the turquoise carpet, but I'm going to go with Sheldon. Realise that the light shines bright and just taking into account the stage. I thought Sheldon, what Sheldon was wearing, I, I thought was extremely impactful and I thought he looked great. Right, best live vocals. I mean, this is gonna be difficult because there were some fantastic vocalists this year. Okay, so Poland, obviously, Christian Ockman. Monica from Lithuania. La, 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 
Sam Ryder UK. Azerbaijan. Mauro from Portugal. Sheldon Riley from Australia. I'm going to say Poland, Azerbaijan and Australia shortlisted. I thought Sheldon Riley's performance was much better than the national final. I think Christian Ockman just always knocks out the part vocally anyway. Okay, I'm going to give this to Azerbaijan. purely because I gave that song a rough ride this season. <laughs> I don't think I ever said anything nice. No, I always commented or complimented his vocals. I'm going to give it to Azerbaijan. Most memorable staging. Okay, so we've got Armenia. Attacking the people before I snap. Snap one, two, where are you? Makes sense. UK. Makes sense. France. This makes sense, although some people say that that was part of its undoing. Greece makes sense. Ukraine. Don't think it was as memorable as others. Czech Republic. I mean, that was just a light show. And San Marino. You've got to think of staging that we're going to remember for a while. I mean, I thought Armenia's staging was amazing. I, I know from the rehearsals from the beginning everyone was saying, uh, or making no reference to post-it notes, I actually thought the staging was quite effective. I remember gagging when I saw the UK staging, but that was only like elements or parts of the song. And then Greece I thought was really effective. Screw it, I'm going to give it to San Marino. I think because of the staging alone, it just oozed professionalism and had the wow factor. And that's why I thought it was gonna sneak through the semis, but it didn't, which was a surprise. Ah, oh, best choreography. <laughs> I mean, I already know who I'm gonna give this to. Serbia is effective. Norway was effective. I mean, Spain. Romania. I thought Israel actually had good choreo. Ukraine. and Albania. <laughs> See, I, yeah. I mean, I have opinions about Albania's choreography. I, I didn't think it was effective. I actually thought Israel's choreography was extremely professional and elevated the song. And Romania was your standard Eurovision malarkey and everyone knows the Serbian choreography. I mean, I'm, I'm delaying the obvious, it's Spain, right? Like 
And I think we can officially now say that that stage performance, there's a pigeon behind me, I don't know if you can see. Or is he gone now? I think we can now say that that supersedes uh, Eleni Ferreira's Fuego. But it's a different time, we're a few years on, right? I think it's not fair to compare songs four years apart. Most improved. This is a good one. So which Eurovision act was most improved? Azerbaijan. No, I still, even to the end, didn't like it. Czech... <laughs> I, I don't care. Like, at the end of the day, like, I've always confessed that Matahari last year was, was my favourite, so it's not even like I'm being harsh. Um, Czech Republic, that was elevated by the end. I kind of was won over in the end. Iceland was... I think the staging massively improved my opinion of that song. Ireland, certainly. Israel, yeah. I mean, San Marino, certainly. Oh, this is tough. Because some of these songs, yeah, I didn't really rate. And then seeing them on stage, I started rating. Okay, so I've already given San Marino an award, but I'm tempted to give it for this. Because thinking about where songs were after the national final to then where they were after watching the semis, I think San Marino probably had the biggest hype but I would say probably Ireland. I think a lot of people who thought that that was not going to qualify started talking about Ireland qualifying after seeing the dress rehearsal. I'm going to give that one to Ireland, to Brooke. Best song with a message. Okay, Norway. (laughs) Sure. Ukraine, I mean, I, I mean, there was more message in regards to the act and the package than necessarily the lyrics themselves. No, that's not true. There is a, a, a deep message to a point. Yeah, Latvia, meh, again, meh, like Norway. The Netherlands, okay, I'm on board with that one. Malta, I mean, the message great, but can you get past... <laughs> the uh, the pop production delivery and Serbia I'm going to give this to the Netherlands I was educated actually after uh, Jordan my friend who's also a YouTuber he made some reference in a video about you know sometimes we just want to lock ourselves up in a fridge or something I don't know what he said and then I actually went away and translated the lyrics of that song it had been out for a while embarrassingly and yeah she's very open about her her history with mental health and depression and the song is is about that journey I think the message of that song is really important and yet embarrassingly I was a bit late to the party on that one Something is going on, and I don't know what. Okay, best use of social media. Okay, Ireland, I really wasn't... I mean, she was quite good when she was going around the preview parties, like, recording TikToks and stuff, I guess. Norway had a very effective social media campaign. I wasn't familiar with Georgia or Slovenia. I mean, the UK, he is a TikTok star. Um, And Latvia. Okay, from my own experience, because YouTube is a social media, uh, I noticed that Norway was extremely active. I think they... I think they commented on pretty much everybody's reaction video, to the best of my knowledge. And, to be fair, Latvia commented on quite a few as well. But, again, going back to Jordan, he said something that was actually quite poignant when he said that he commends Subwoofer in regards to their ability to keep up this universe that they had created and they were able to communicate that universe in their social media posts as well. So I'm going to give that one to Norway. Definitely. Best use of props. The butter churner from Poland and the giant hamster from Ukraine. We've had some pretty infamous props over the years. And no, the use of the kinetic sun doesn't count. That's funny. Um, Okay, Uh, so we've got Austria. I guess they had that round thing. Is that a prop? Finland, balloons. San Marino. There's a lot going on, but let's say the bull being the most famous. Serbia. I guess the the washing the hands, right? The bowl and the towel. Armenia, I mean, she did have the guitar and there were certain things in that room, right? And Azerbaijan, it's just steps. Um, I don't know why I'm thinking, it's San Marino again, right? (laughs) 
I think that the ball was an absolute genius move. And yes, I loved Armenia's staging and I guess Serbia's prop assisted and helped some of the lyrics of that song but no San Marino for me easy I am literally I am sweating it is absolutely boiling so if I get through this video it's gonna be a miracle if there's a large edit or I've changed t-shirt it's because I've fainted <laughs> and I've had to come back <laughs> best Eurovision campaign trail ah pre-parties okay and virtually through the oh okay uh, so, which Eurovision act had the best campaign trail? Spain, Romania, Norway, Albania, Ireland, Ukraine. From memory, I'm pretty sure that Albania, Renella, Brooke from Ireland, and Rus from Romania went to every preview party. They really embraced the preview parties. So, I might be wrong. I know Ukraine was at a lot of them, obviously. I'm going to go with Renella. Only because being in Madrid, that was one of the latter ones. And due to the campaign trial, people were starstruck when they saw Renella. She certainly had a kind of star vibe to her. And I think that's due to the campaign trail that she created for herself. I'm gonna go with Albania, Renella. Best, Best music video. Austria. Okay, that was actually a very polished professional music video, actually. Georgia, which one? Because there was that initial one, wasn't there, that they released? No, it'll be the actual video. Which, uh, yeah, is a trip. Greece, I mean... Is it Santorini, the island or islands that that was filmed in? It looks beautiful. Estonia. I mean, yeah, Moldova. Albania had a good music video actually. Um, it's tough. I'm going to give it to Moldova. Uh, because actually I wasn't a huge fan of that song and then when I watched the music video I was more of a fan and moreover I understood the point of the song after watching the music video and actually the music video just makes you want to smile. It's really good fun. It would be close with Albania, I'm not going to lie. That music video is very... They're all quite good, but I would say the one that stood out for me, and actually I would always watch the music video of Moldova rather than the live performance initially before the semi-finals. I'm going to give it to Moldova. Congeniality Award. That's really tough. That's really tough. I mean, from memory, you would be tempted to give it to Sam Ryder, right? Due to his loving embrace of Marius Bear after zero televotes. When I went to the Madrid preview party, I actually thought Mal Malik from Germany was lovely. I actually never got to interview him, but I saw him with everyone else. And actually he was really chilled in the crowd and he would use the crowd toilets, not the... I, I just, I don't know, I got a good vibe from him. We Are Dommy were cool. Uh, they were really sweet. They were very giving with their time throughout the whole Eurovision process with even like small channels like I would say like mine, but I didn't do anything with them in the end. But I did notice small channels on YouTube had interviews with them. I'm going to narrow it down to three. Marius Bear. Cool. It is cool. Is that a great meaning? You know, like, yeah, that's the track for me. That was worth the wait, Marius Bear. That was and worth the wait. Um, okay. <laughs> um, very quickly, first. 
I met him in Madrid, he was lovely. I interviewed him and he's lovely. Andrea from North Macedonia, she was still in Turin on the final. If you're a follower of my YouTube channel, then you'll have seen a video where I talked about this, uh, where I was at a bar and uh, the service was awful. So I went to go and get some drinks from a shop. Shh. But I left all my stuff with my friends other than my money. And then I had my purchase and I saw her with two friends, like literally like 10 minutes before the final was starting, they were walking down the street and I was like, oh my gosh, Andrea, can I have a picture with you? She's like, yeah, sure. I was like, oh my God, I've left my phone with my friends. And I was like, oh, can I have a hug instead? And she's like, absolutely sure. She was really sweet. And I guess Sam Wright. Uh, make sure that you remember to soak it up and live it while you're there. Have you made some genuine friends amongst the other entries? Yeah, I think, I think so. It's just like every time you see it, like, just like fist bumping everyone when you're walking into a hotel, no matter how tired you are. And uh, everyone's just so, so lovely. And ever, I feel like everyone is stoked that they have the opportunity to be here. Uh, like when I met him in Madrid, he was lovely. And I don't know anyone who has a bad word to say against him. He was a fantastic ambassador for the UK and, and anyone who met him kind of fell in love with him. <sighs> Oh, I am literally sweating. Um, I'm going to give it to Sam Ryder. I think also because that scene with Marius Bear kind of epitomises what the Congeniality Award's about, right? The Dana International Award for LGBTQ plus equality. Now, I did a video for this already, my top LGBTQIA plus moments of 2022. So I don't want to say too much about this category because I've already done a whole video about it. But I would say probably a sister from Iceland, every given opportunity, they would advocate and promote trans rights and trans equality and just general equality and acceptance for all. They were brilliant. Even in my interview with them in Madrid, they talked about it and they had t-shirts that alluded to kind of their thoughts and feelings on, on, on trans rights and LGBTQIA plus acceptance and equality and flags, everything actually about them and their act. Uh, they were fantastic, in fact amazing LGBTQIA plus advocates. So I will give it to Sister. Um, now before I faint, because <laughs> it's really hot, um, is that it? I think that is it. So yeah, there we go. That's who I would give those awards to. So who would you give your awards to? Please let me know in the comments below. If you're still here and you've not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe, please do support my channel. It is very much appreciated. And yeah, until next time, stay safe.